Good evening and welcome to the Finance Subcommittee meeting for the Brockton School Committee. Today is Tuesday, May 3rd, and the time is 5.44 p.m. Uh, the first item, actually, uh, we're going to establish a quorum. Mrs. Sullivan? Here. Mr. Homer? Here. Mrs. Ehlers? Here. Mrs. Mendez? Here. Mr. Rodriguez? Here. Mr. Sullivan? Here. Tim Sullivan? And the Mayor Sullivan? Here. And uh, the chair is here, present. So we do have a quorum. The first item on the agenda is the FY 2023 budget update. And I believe um, we have. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So Chris is with us. He has an update um, of a final number um, from uh, Troy Claxon and the mayor. Um, again, we've been waiting for that number um, so we could move forward with um, you know, obviously bringing you all the information that will help us get to that number um, and some positions that will add through attrition. And um, so, but finally, to, um, we got the number yesterday. Um, and Chris is going to go over that number and he's going to tell you what he put in your packet. Yeah, correct. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Chris. <clears throat> Uh, so, um, included in your packet, as promised, um, there is a position control booklet who shows uh, all employees who are employed uh, through the Brockton Public School System currently, um, as well as a itemized uh, budget list um, by services. Uh, due to the health insurance costs increasing over 4%, uh, the city has reduced our estimated appropriation to $206 million, uh, down from $207. Uh, we are balancing the district budget with pre-purchasing and ESSER 3 funding. Uh, we have made some adjustments in areas of the budget that don't directly affect the classroom, such as electricity, gas, utilities, contingency, and additional personnel. <clears throat> Included in those cuts is uh, $50,000 in tools, 200,000 housekeeping supplies, 200,000 in uh, Rizzo duplicator leases, Minolta copier leases, as well as $50,000 in postage. So um, just to go over back of the health insurance, as you know, last year was our big windfall of um, SOA money. Um, where we, um, that's when we really were able to hire several staff members. We hired 140 new staff members across the district between teachers, MTAs, paras. Um, we also added the community allies late in the year. We added some mentors. We brought back administrative positions um, that we hadn't had that we had to restructure, like the, the associate principal at Brockton High, the two coordinators at the middle school, uh, and actually things we were dinged on by the, the Department of Ed's district review of, you know, our structure being poor. So that totaled 140 positions that we, we added last year. So there's where you see the 4% increase in, because when, when a lot of those people obviously take health insurance, then the health insurance cost goes up and the cities obviously pays that expense. They absorb, yeah, they absorb that expense. So the, the uh, Troy Clarkson, along with the mayor, uh, worked very hard to get us to this number um, based on all those increases. And I did speak to Troy um, just before the meeting, and that 206 number may come up a little higher. Uh, but again, he's working diligently. Hopefully, by the end of the day, tomorrow, we'll get a, a solid, solid figure. Yeah, I gave him a hard stop tomorrow. We need to have a hard figure. Yeah. So he will. That's great, Mayor. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Thank you. Um, Mrs. Ehlers? Um, just really quick. So. I guess my question is, didn't we budget the increase in fringe benefits when we added these positions? Uh, we, we budgeted a portion of it, but you don't quite, you're not sure if uh, these individuals are gonna be on family plans or single plans. Uh, some of these um, employees are younger, so they're still on their parents' plans. It's hard to budget. Um, yeah, but don't we have like a salary and then an average fringe for what their health care benefits are going to be? And that's the total hire package. So that's what the expense is going to be for the hire. No? Uh, not because of COVID, uh, our premiums went up because a lot of people got sick. So the insurance costs across the board for city and schools have been increased, no matter if it's Blue Cross or Harvard Pilgrim. So in terms of the dollar amount, the calculation, that 4% is probably more going to be like 4.25 to 4.5 based upon the hard figure. 
but we wouldn't have known that because the forecast is only achieved once the real number comes in. Correct. And the health insurance have been all jacked up across the 351 municipalities because of yep. COVID. Yep. At least that's what they've told yeah. us. Yeah, and you're off a million dollars based on a $50 million budget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not a huge uh, percentage. Um, just out of curiosity, the who who decides what the what we're going to cut in terms of the tools, housekeeping, Rizzo, Minolta? My biggest concern is the postage. If we're going to be doing, if Jess is going to continue and do any kind of marketing for us, are we going to need those postage dollars for any kind of marketing campaigns? Well, um, myself, Aldo, and uh, the superintendent, we went through uh, the line items, and we feel there is enough money to cover those costs. Okay. The other thing that I just want to put on the record because the schools uh, have been ahead of the, uh, the city on this is they do bulk mailings. They use DSL uh, over uh, on the east side of the city of Brockton and it's actually brilliant. It's a huge cost uh, savings and a cost containment measure. So Chris and, and Mike and all, they'll thank you for doing that and we're going to replicate that on the city side as well. Thank you. Any other members with any um, comments or um, questions or statements? Mr. Tim Sullivan. Hello, Chris. Just one question on the uh, the line item: a duplicator and a copier. What's the difference? Is that are they we the have same two lease? We have two separate leases. Uh, did, the, it's the same type of equipment, but we have two separate leases. So it's just different names. Correct. Yep. Yeah, the Rizzo uh, lease is those are the um, the machines that are in the schools that have to when teachers are running uh, uh, multiple copies, like hundreds out. Uh, for their classroom those are the rizzos and then the regular copies are what you see at the main you know the offices that are making ones yeah. and twos copies here and there yeah mr sullivan the rizzos are more heavy duty um copiers okay thank you yep. thank you any members um any other members with any um questions or statements i th thank you um that looks like it's that good okay I, I, if I oh, could, sure, Madam Chair, just, just um, to put on the record again, myself and Mike Thomas and Chris, and although we have a meeting, um, we had a meeting last week with the state delegation, the two reps and the state senator, um, and again, Jerry Cassidy, Michelle Dubois, and Mike Brady have reassured us again, Student Opportunity Act is going to be intact again, which is really great because it's always the misnomer. You don't know, right? Um, but, you know, from a budgeting standpoint, I do want to applaud. I mean, Chris stepped up when Aldo went out. Um, and Aldo was still not back, but he's, he came to City Hall the other day. He's been working. You guys have gone to his house as well to sit down. So I just want people to know that, you know, this is a lot, a lot of time and effort to try to figure it out. We don't just, like, throw a dart and say we're cutting that. There's a lot of due diligence, and, and Mike, you lead the charge on that. Um, but I do just want to thank the delegation because for years, the Webby case, McDuffie case, Hancock case, we were suing to get our fair share. We finally got the fair share. And again, with COVID, we didn't know if we were going to lose it. But thanks to the delegation, they reassured, reassured us again last week, which is great news. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Rodriguez. And, and just to Oops, be clear, um, this is, these are just recommendations. You make the right, final right, determination right. on the budget. This is where we found... Mm -hmm money so far that we can either pre-buy or go without next year you would actually make the final determination we bring you our recommendations and you decide thank you superintendent mr Rodri mr rodriguez did you have a question uh, my question is on the uh, covid medical waiting rooms what is that uh, we had during when our numbers were high we had these uh in the nurses outside the nurses rooms we had these specialized uh areas where the students would go and be contained before they were being tested. So since our numbers are so low in the city and around the Commonwealth, we feel it's reasonable to not include that cost in next year's budget. So we were required to ha <clears throat> have them this year by the Department of Ed. You had to have COVID waiting medical rooms for someone that either tests positive through the pool testing or rapid testing. Um, or they came down with symptoms, they had to wait in a separate room and then we had to staff that um, with either a nursing assistant or an MTA, uh, a very expensive cost um, that we were able to pick up through, I think, the SR2, um, Correct. which yep. we didn't, you know, we don't want to carry into next year unless, you know, we get into a situation where they say um, we need to have those rooms again. But there's no indication at this time that they're going to make us have those rooms. But that was a big expense this year. And it was really hard to find people to fill them. Any 
Any other questions, Mr. Rodriguez? Okay. Um, Mrs. Ehlers. Um, just out of curiosity, normally when you're preparing a budget, the utilities are a fixed cost. So where, where can we find $200,000 savings with gas and fuel and electricity? And how can we anticipate unemployment and workers comp, a cut of 150,000? I'm just curious on the methodology. Well, for the utilities, I did an analyzation. I went through the years and I saw that they were um, probably budgeted a little higher than what I would have budgeted. So I took the initiative and I advised the superintendent as well as Aldo that I believe that we can reduce those costs. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Ehlers. Any other members with any questions or comments? Uh, just, just to kind of follow up what Mr. Rodriguez said again, if, if again, COVID's not gone, it's not gone, it's still here. We're doing analysis of our wastewater every night. Um, the difference between when we were, you know, yellow, green, red was that we were doing PCR testing, right? Now a lot of people are doing at-home testing, so the numbers are a little, a little off, right? If you test positive at home, you're not notifying the Board of Health, you're not going to be uh, notifying DPH. But um, if DESE or if the governor or if our local Board of Health thinks we need to reinstate any type of safe precautions, I just want to make it clear as mayor and as school chair, we will not put a price tag on health and safety. We'll come up with the money. We'll do whatever we need to make sure that the students and staff are safe. Right now, Dr. Herman, who I'm keeping on uh, as a consultant, um, um, he and I speak every single day. He feels confident right now, as does Dr. Mondes here from Board of Health and Dr. Cahill, Linda Cahill on the school side. But just for the parents that are watching this, if the numbers spike, we'll pivot and we'll do what we did before and make sure that it's a safe environment for everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mr. Um, Tim Sullivan. Chris, just one final question. I, uh, chapter 70, is that all set with the state and the Senate? I mean, the the House and the Senate? Uh, the House, not the Senate. The House came out with their final number. We're still waiting on the Senate. So, Ch But chances are, uh, Mr. Sullivan, that number won't change from the House. It's not going to change? It, no. In, pe in his, like, years, I can't remember one time that it, it changed from going to the House to the Senate. So I'm confident that number's not going to move, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Chris. Um, any other questions or comments? It, it just sure, it, it may change next year if the gaming bill gets passed. You know, that's a projection of a windfall of money to be spread out, and the cities in the Commonwealth will benefit greatly. The towns will get their fair share. But again, I, I concur with what Chris said. My 14 years in the city council and now as mayor, it doesn't really change much between the House and Senate side. Um, I was up with Lieutenant Governor Polito for an hour last week on Beacon Hill in her office talking about more money. Um, and, you know, Brockton is poised to get additional money from the federal and from earmarks. Um, but this is a budget that's been really, I want to thank you, Chris. You spent a lot of time on this, but I appreciate we, it, we feel you. very confident in this, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I believe that's it. Thank you so much for the presentation, Chris. Chris, you want to go through? Sure. Oh, sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so if we move on to the second um, handout, it's, again, you're familiar with this uh, with this breakdown, uh, it's just with the, the new uh, estimated funding uh, revenue from the city. So we plugged in the 206 million. Um, we have uh, we're balancing with uh, grants of 6.4 million, circuit breaker of 2 million, and uh, revenue from the ESSER three of 6.25 million, which brings the <clears throat> uh, net school spending figure to 220 million 650 thousand. Uh, it lists, it breaks out the expenses right below. It shows a balanced budget, and then down at the bottom, the non-net school spending, which will be thirteen million six hundred forty-five thousand. Mrs. Ehlers. Chris, I'm just curious. So this time, first of all, the first part of my question is, how long do you think it will be before we'd see any kind of revenue from our from the busing fleet? Like year three? Like I guess my question. We're is actually when, seeing it now. Okay. Because that number would have been closer to sixteen million if okay. we stayed with first student. Okay, that's that was the second part yeah. of my and question. We'll, and we'll have Aldo put together. He's he's working um, on it now. He yep. has the projections that he when we when we brought him to the school committee when we decided to buy go yep. into the uh, the transportation business. Um, <laughs> he actually had his progression uh, and um, 
his projections of savings throughout over 10 years yep. compared to where for a student's costs went up um, over their last 10 years. So he's kind of projected that out. And, you know, I think probably you're going to see more savings projected than he even thought because of where gas prices are now yeah. with inflation. We didn't factor any of that in yeah. when we decided to buy the buses a, a, almost two years, two years ago, actually. None of this, we no, nobody, we had no idea we'd see gas prices where they are or inflation. <clears throat> or, so I think, but we'll, we'll have that for you next time, actually. He's doing that now. I, uh, That's fine. I, I was actually just curious that would that be another line item on this sheet, transportation revenue, or would that roll up into another area? How do, how do we plan on itemizing that, the that's revenue? That's a good question. I was speaking to Aldo about that a few days ago. I'm not sure if we're going to be setting up a special revolving account uh, for that, So, but that's for uh, future discussion. So okay. we're, we're going to be talking about that uh, over the summer. Um, Chris, and, how does that work? Because I know the transportation money comes from the city side, non-net. So how Correct, would that but, we're, but what we'll, we'll be doing, since we have our own transportation department, we'll be now um, creating revenue, charging other departments right. for, you know, uh, for yep. transportation, the SPED department, athletics, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So this is all, these are all things that are on the list that uh, we need to discuss. Right. And then the only other question I have, and this is purely just my own ignorance, so I want to just make sure I understand it. But we're going through negotiations now, and in some of those negotiations, like they we're discussing things like contracts and whatnot. How do we account for the change if there is a change in the, in what we anticipate for a contract and what we actually finalize as a contract? Is that could that put put us in a worse place, a better place? Do we budget for that? Oh yeah. So um, when you're budgeting, our responsibility is to add a budget factor. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It may not cover all the hundred percent of the cost, but it will cover. Um, a substantial amount of cost. We have an idea of where we're going to okay. end up. So, okay. So that's sort of already accounted for in a way. Absolutely. Okay. That, that would be irresponsible on my part to not budget. Well, thank you. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. No, no, just, no. Just, I just wanted you know, to make yeah. sure, and I just wasn't sure how it would all pan out. But thank you yeah, for no, clarifying. You. Appreciate yep. it. Thank you, Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Um, in response to Kathy's um, question. That's why we have to like kind of check with finance. When we're in negotiations, we never promise anything unless it goes to Aldo, Chris, yep. and they know the budget. Yeah. That's why we hire these guys, yeah. you know? And so we got to check with them. Yeah, we can't really tell anybody anything until we check with them. And Kathy, I wasn't yep. being flip when I said I, was being, I wasn't being irresponsible. It's just... Uh... No, not at all. Not at all. I didn't even think of it that way, no, but I'm, you're absolutely yeah. right. Like, I'm thinking of it secondary, it's but so this is what you do. For me, you know? Yeah. So, nope. Yeah. Understood 100%. No worries. Thank you. Uh, Mayor. If I could, just a couple things to piggyback on the transportation. We're going to have a huge cost, uh, cost savings over the term, but um, one thing we are also still working on, and I hope Mike and I will be able to report back to you soon, we're trying to find a permanent home for our transportation department, right? And so we've been looking at sites. We've been walking. Mike and I were walking around the other day, locations. So again, at some point, we'll be able to do that again so we don't have to pay the rent at the fairgrounds. And we'll be able to have our own uh, really great location that's going to meet all our needs. One other thing is um, when I was in D.C., I think I shared this with you. I hope I did. Um, I spoke to Senator Markey and Congressman Lynch and even Congressman Keating about getting electric buses. So even though the buses we bought are fuel buses, um, we are, as a city slash school, going to be applying. The way the feds are doing it, it's a grant. It's not a federal earmark. It's a grant. Um, the money will be passed through to Beacon Hill, to the Commonwealth, and then we can apply under the grant funding formula to get electric vehicles. That's one tranche of money and then the other tranche is to get the electrical charges to charge the vehicle so there's a lot kind of going on in the queue right now it would not be germane to this current budget before you but I would forecast a year from now we should be talking about um, those expenses that will be cost savings over the term some people have said well why did you buy the buses not electric well if we can get free buses or at least 80% from the feds to subsidize it's a no-brainer so again um, the buses we have are going to be a fleet for BPS. We are going to be able to make some money out of it. Um, but anything that we can get from the feds uh, subsidized, we will just add to that fleet. So we won't have 100% electrical vehicles, but we will be able to add some more to that fleet, I would say, within a year's time. And, um, Plus, we, uh, people have to be reminded that when we made this decision yeah. two years ago, yeah. 
you know, we weren't talking about if we talked about buying electric buses, you you had the price of all the buses, which is higher uh, than the gas. Also, we didn't have the money to pay for the infrastructure to set up all the electrical charges needed yes. to, ch to charge, and we wouldn't even have the, the location anyway. Right. Uh, you basically need your own grid to be able to charge a bus fleet of our size. So, you know, people have asked about electrical buses, but we would never have the, even now we wouldn't have the capacity or the, or the capital, less funded by the federal That's government, right. to actually put the infrastructure in place needed to charge the buses. That's right. And uh, what I uh, failed to mention as well is we will be bringing online a, um, our handicap buses. Yes. So we will, there will be a huge cost savings for our special needs wheelchair um, students. So um, that's a substantial portion of our budget. So yeah, that, just, that piece of, just that piece alone is huge. $650 a day um, for one student to be transported with a wheelchair van. So, so roughly. When you, when you hire an outside company. So rough numbers, 21 students last year, um, well, this year, is about $3 million cost of the district. $3 million. It's huge. So that's um, huge. So right there, right off the bat, you'll see that cost savings. So, so um, thank you, Mayor and Superintendent. So a lot of people watching don't realize this is what we were paying per bus to lease them. So A year. A year so we got our money's worth by the time we get the electric um, buses in so it was definitely a good investment we were, we were leasing them for the same price as where we're owning them for um, and, and that was every year ones. yeah and, and they're brand new brand new um, definitely our, our students deserve the best busing I mean so this this is definitely um, a plus for us so and we could probably look at can we turn around and, and, and sell them or we can probably rent them down the road they're still actually, fairly new yeah we actually will be um, as we get a new um, the rest of the buses in we will be uh, leasing um, so what uh, Kathy said about the revenue because we will have local cities and towns asking us because we've done it when we've when for a student couldn't um, accommodate some of our field trips we would have to go to Lucini or Tremblay or uh, use other so we will advertise our buses out there saying you know so I'm sure local cities and towns will and again that will be the revenue stream that we'll have to um, you know set up for a revolving account yep. thank you any members um, have any questions or statements okay we can go on to the next one okay sure so in the last two handouts, it's just a breakdown, uh, more detailed of the numbers that we just went over. <clears throat> so the first, uh, the first two sections is broken out uh, into certified and non-certified personnel. The next page breaks out all your um, contract services, supplies. And then the last two pieces breaks it out and summarizes for net school spending and non-net school spending. Chris, if you don't mind, um, it's a little, I mean, it's, it's not necessarily on topic. If Madam Chair, if you give a little leeway. Sure, Mayor. Um, I want to thank Dr. Cobbs. We, we signed off on the, the third submission for this building. Um, Mike, you signed off and I signed off on it. So um, in terms of if we get it this time or not, in terms of the renovation of this building, um, some people have asked me relative to going into this current future budget, which is going to be ratified and start July 1. Um, what happens if we do get, we hope we get approved this time. If you, if you don't mind telling the committee and those watching, what is the next steps if we do get that approval in terms of a dollar amount? Because I could a jump in. A ton, ton of money. Okay. But. Yeah, so I work with the MSBA closely in pr uh, previous. Probably for next fiscal year, there'd be nothing. Um, because by the time you get accepted, um, it would probably not be until they would probably let us know yeah. sometime in September, yep. October, and then then they have to line you up with, then you have to go, um, go through a process of being lined up with uh, an OPM that will schedule a feasibility study, and you'd have to put that in the FY24 budget would have to be where the city would have to budget um, the feasibility study, which would have to go back to the city council. Wait, a year from now. It would be a year from now. Okay. So you would, we would be doing it right around this time 
to figure out what what the city would need a budget for that feasibility study because you enter in once you're accepted into the core program which the MSPA calls it which is a renovation or a brand new school you enter into the feasibility stage so they they hire an LPM who then in return hires engineers and architects and then they put a price tag saying the city this is what it's going to cost you to go do the feasibility study and but you would have we would have time to budget that for next year because then the feasibility phase is at least two years um, where they will go through this whole building and they they basically tell you that you know it's either more cost effective to renovate or build a new one and then the city has to make a decision on what we do um, at that time um, but it is it's it would be pushed off to next fiscal okay. year and, then and it's I think they allow you because it's a it's it's usually a six-year process from the the day you get approved to yeah. the day they put the first shovel in the ground it's a six-year process so I think you're able to budget six years out over six years out yeah. and then the last thing and this is I think both to you and and to Chris relative to the former May Institute which is now our new Keith Center on Summer Street um, we have workers there internal workers there every single morning I know that because I visited them um, that would be um, in this in this current budget to let um, the committee know um, the acquisition cost for that a little over four million bucks we have put in for reimbursement from Plymouth County because again they got their tranche of ARPA money that they need to disperse we're having um, gentle discussions about that right now um, I believe and I know for a fact that it meets the standards of the ARPA regulation so we got our 17 million last year from Congressman Lynch and the feds another 17 million in July the 34 million on ARPA not ESSER this is ARPA but then also a tranche of ARPA money came in through the county again there's only a few counties in, in Massachusetts anymore but Plymouth County so the four plus to a 4.2 something like that acquisition um, we will get reimbursed from the care from the uh, not the cares act from the county under ARPA uh, I call it tranche 2 because it's different than what Lynch brought down and then there'll be additional ARPA money coming in from Beacon Hill uh, as well so there are really three tranches um, and then the Esther which is dedicated ARPA on the school side but in terms of this budget that's before the committee um, is there anything that you needed to, to inform us of any costs associated with the former May Institute, the new Keith Center, that would be in the current budget before them? Not in the current local budget, Mayor. No. Nothing at all? No. Okay. No. Thank you. No. Thanks. So if anybody, so um, the area to focus on is the peach column. That uh, is the current, that's the budgeted figures that we're looking for in 2023. So if anybody has any specific questions, I'm happy to answer them. Oh, I apologize. I was looking at the no problem. Mr. Homer. <laughs> Chris, what uh, I'm looking at number 46, the technology under the ordinary maintenance category. What's okay. the difference between the um, fiscal year 2022 and the 2023? What's the change? Uh, what's the anticipated increase coming from for technology? Uh, just uh, we need we want to get to one to one uh, computers uh, with all the uh, with all our students. So that's buying additional laptops and equipment. But to continue it, yeah. Yeah. So we have to continue to swap out the older ones. Now that we have 16,000 computers across the district, we, uh, we have to every two years flush out the older ones and bring the newer ones in. So that was the, this was always cut every year, but with <laughs> remote learning, this one, <laughs> This is now fully funded. This is not, now a cost, know, yeah. Not buying half of the laptops like we always did. Now this is being fully funded every year. Mrs. Sullivan. So the first year we were one to one was last year, right? Last year, yes. Yeah, so that was, was that in this current budget year? Yeah, well, we used, we used the, um, the first stimulus um, to buy, which was, 
the year before we came back remote. Was that, yeah, before last year. <laughs> it seems like. No, it's like a <laughs> it, Sorry, it seems like dog years now. Um, so when we, when we came back before, um, when we went into the pandemic, we were nowhere close to being one-to-one. -one. Right. Um, nowhere close. I think we were probably eight, half, we had about 8,000 computers for 16,000 students when we went into the pandemic March of 2020. And then when the first um, stimulus package came through, that's what we used through the Plymouth County. Some of it was covered through the Plymouth County money. Um, four million. Yeah, four million where we were able to buy. What we did was buy, you know, phase out the old ones. We still, we, we had out of that 8,000, there was about 3,000 that were good, real, like only a year or two old. The other ones were not. Um, and then we made that big purchase, and now it's, we have to start phasing. So Dan and his tech team have put in, a, and I can have them come before you, they put in a system now where we, how they rotate them in. Mrs. Ehlers. Um, Mike, this is probably just a stupid question. Um, Superintendent, this is probably a stupid question. Um, the school committee line item, we increased it 15,000. Was that a request by the school committee? Um, and I'll, do we have an idea of what the balance in that account is right now if it's funded at 56K for, per year? I'm just yeah, curious. Yeah, we can find out. Okay. And then I didn't know what the $15,000 increase represented, if anything, or we're we just trying to increase it. Um, Chris, was it change in benefits maybe? School, Might have been something with the health insurance, but we I believe so, I'll, I'll, check, I'll check on yeah. it. Yeah, I'll okay. check on it. My apologies. No, no worries, thank you. I have one question. Mrs. Mendez. Um, the additional personnel, line 20, um, a decrease by negative 67.6 percent um, is there a reason for that correct so through we're looking to through attrition um, and based on our drop in enrollment we're trying to level level that um, that piece off for additional personnel we're not looking to hire any additional personnel uh, oh, 67 percent but that's not 60 percent of seven percent of the staff no, no, no. That's, just, that's, that's just the, the <laughs> number. That's the bet. Yeah. That's with the drop in enrollment, trying to bring our numbers in line. Mrs. Ehlers? This is probably going to be an unpopular question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Line 27 under personal services, non certified, is that one person? The lieutenant? Yes. 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 And we're giving him a $20,000 increase this year? No, so that's but we we project out based on uh, there could be a lot. There's a quite a bit of overtime. That's overtime and and regular salary, salary. and 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 um, the change in the police contract. Okay, thank you. So that's the that that line on it, line on him is the agreement back when. Um, we didn't have an officer in charge of school police um, and the city added the 13th a lieutenant and um, it was agreed upon at the time that this the uh, um, that the school committee would pick up the cost of that extra the 13th lieutenant to the credit of the mayor and um, chief Gomes and now our new chief Perez um, we actually have a sergeant who's been added at no cost to us. So basically, I mean, you can say it's two for one now. We have a sergeant, which we never had before, um, uh, Sergeant Livingston. So they sent us the, the sergeant, but they're not charging us back for the sergeant. Indefinitely? Yeah, <laughs> I haven't heard any year. different. I don't, they've, he's been great and worked great together, the lieutenant and the sergeant. So um, I think we would have a say if they decide to Pull that person back but it has been no indication of that no I wasn't worried about them pulling oh. them back I was worried because I like the idea I think that's great I just didn't know if this is a cost we should expect to incur next year as additional salary or something and just wondering like that's why I said indefinitely can we count on the city paying? we would have to yeah if they tried to put that cost to us it would have to be an agreement like the last with this lieutenant it okay. would have to be an agreement with the school committee and the in the city council. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yep. 
Thank you. Any members um, with any questions or comments? Mr. Sullivan. One item, Chris, item 32, the, uh, the libraries and the books. I noticed in 2022 there was no budget at all, and now there's $100,000. Is that for the, the cost of the books or for the personnel? Uh, uh, that would be cost of books. Just the books. Books, correct. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Thank <clears throat> Any other members with questions or comments? Mrs. Ehlers. Chris, really quick, the increase in the athletic program, just because it's a flat rate of 64,000, is that a position or is that an increase in like supplies? I'm just curious. Is that a new staff member? member Kathy. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, 33. That would be. Those are, um, those are supplies. That's supply, but it also could be. It was would, person it would be the increase for um, the anticipated um, raises as well for coaches. Is that not a line item? No, not on. The, it wouldn't be there. that one. No, okay. no, just contract. It'd be contracted services. Uh, maybe refer, You know, referees hiring referees, supplies, gotcha. uniforms. Gotcha. Fair enough, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, we've been budgeting more um, now that we have the middle school sports program. Um, and it's also, also obviously, we, I'm not, we, well, I've always had the middle school, but we have middle school football. Yeah. Um, and I've informed the athletic director a few years ago that, you know, we really want every year to upgrade the quality of our helmets. Um, even though we do get them conditioned and you have to get them recertified every year by Riddell. I still want them swapped out with newer ones every chance we get, so that's why you see the increase there. Perfect, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Rodriguez. I don't see no money for the fields. <laughs> Just <laughs> Of course you're gonna. <laughs> Chris. You gotta wait till he comes back in the room. <laughs> <laughs> We gotta wait for him. Drag it out. Drag it out. <laughs> I think we're ready to go to the next. Is this it? That's it. That's it. Um, well, so just um, so for next time, we won't have a meeting next week, but the following Tuesday, so two weeks from tonight, um, where we'll come to you with all our recommended um, the cuts where we have uh, through attrition. Um, again, we have pretty much a thousand less students and um, extra, you know, more staff than we've had before. So we have, and again, class sizes in some areas are really low. We have to really level those out. Again, there'll be no layoffs, um, but we will definitely have to do it through attrition. So we will come with those. And we'll also have some additions like the new launch program in the bilingual department will come with additional positions, which will be done through attrition. So we'll, we'll have that in sent to you ahead of time in a packet. I, I also, we should have the budget books are usually a little bit later than that, Chris. Yeah, towards the end of uh, May. May, okay. So but then about, roughly in about three weeks, Mr. Superintendent. So in two weeks, we'll be able to start really talking in detail about um, the positions we recommend that we see, because we've been meeting with um, our principals, um, going through their class size, going through um, where we can see we can do things through attrition to make sure it's leveled off. Um, but again, that would be where you see cuts with either certified staff or non-certified staff through open positions we currently have, which we have several uh, that are filled by permanent subs or through retirements. So you'll see all that next two weeks from now. Oh. Mrs. Ehlers. Mike, I just have a question, and if it's completely ignorant, let me know. But is on line 28, the bilingual facilitators, that's a hefty line item. Is that is there any crossover with those individuals into the bilingual program, or are we comparing? Those Am I comparing all, apples and oranges? No, that's, they actually work directly with the bilingual department, but they, there are um, community. Translators. And there are translators. There are parent liaisons. Community, okay. They, yeah, that's, I think we added, um, they speak all of the languages that, yeah. the, um, so that's, that's the same, but they're not, um, but you're right, they, they don't, they'll help explain the launch program to yeah. obviously our families, but they, they don't factor into teaching uh, or any support in the schools as far as educate, you know, the, the yeah, education the of the student in yeah. the classroom, yep. um, but they do so much with our, our families, our parents, and 
Yeah, they've been invaluable, especially during COVID. That's what I was hoping you'd say. Yeah. So thank you. Oh, invaluable. There's just a, a group of people that they're out all the time, nights, and what they did during COVID to help our families get the benefits they deserved, yeah. making sure they knew how to get laptops and how, help them use the laptops and support their, their children with the laptops and with the online learning, and also how for food security, making sure they knew how they could get help, vaccines, all those things. No, I'm glad you're saying that because I don't think that's a line item we should touch. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And it's like coming to you with, like, when we come to you, I'm, I mean, you're not going to see any adjustment counselors on the list, yeah. or guidance counselors on the list, or anything yeah. that provides social, emotional support. I mean, what we're looking at is, you know, where you have classes that are 14, 15, 16, that are just, you know, they're low, and we're not looking for them to go to 30 or 28. We just need them closer to the mid-20s. Is that our, like, critical mass, what we, what we have to hit is, like, mid-20s for us to yeah, get Yeah, I mean, I think we yeah. try to stay in the lower 20s for K to 2, Yep. which actually the research shows that lower class size at that level makes a big difference. But I think when you get up to the upper levels, you know, of elementary you try to stay in the mid-20s. You could go a little bit higher in the secondary, but you don't want to go too high. We, tr we, tr we want to try to stay into the mid-20s mid as best we can. Okay. But I think we have to do a better job of making sure it's consistent from school to school and class to class because teachers should pretty much have the same teaching load yeah. across the district as best possible. You're not going to always have it perfect, at yeah. even number, but it's, it can't be so lopsided. It's just an equity issue. Fair enough. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, Mr. Rodriguez. Um, I'm assuming the Promise High School and the virtuals included into this. Yeah, that's in the. That's factored in. Correct. Yep. And then also with the expansion with the Promise, how is that going to affect our numbers? They have the teaching staff to, to, um, to take up to the 100 students, and then next year we'll have to decide when, they, when they're going to double that number. We're going to have to see where the Bar Foundation goes with, we're either going to have to pick that up locally or we're going to have, or the Bar Foundation is going to tell us that they're going to cover the cost and pick us up. I think if we end up getting the Bar Grant, it's going to be, I think it's a five-year process, but um, we'll ha if we have to add teaching staff to the Promise, it would be the following school year and we'd have to make that decision then. Thank you. Thank you. Any other, um, Mr. Sullivan? It's one final question. I don't know if it's for Chris or Mike on item 12, excuse me, item 12, the substitute teachers. We have talked about it here like for, for the last couple of years that there's not enough substitute teachers. And I'm looking at this with a zero increase. It, it's it's we almost can't like get, we can't get them. Not that we, it's, it's, just, it's, just, it's highly, in it. we didn't want to increase that line item and then cut from somewhere else we just we felt with that number is we can we would be able to get the minimum amount of subs that we can get we just can't get there's nobody substituting so so we didn't think it was fiscally responsible to add to that budget because we just can't get subs we're hoping that we can take money from that budget and put it somewhere else if we get down to it because we just haven't you know we put it in what we had last year, and we used to cut it, we cut it all the time during the real lean years, but we that's, my, that's money you might be able to take and say, Mike, we'd like you to keep this or that, and we'd have to take it. That's a light item we could look at because we're not getting substitutes. With the zero in increase, we're still going to be looking for substitutes? Oh, yeah, we have it. We still, we've been advertising for them all year. Um, I mean, we've, it's, we've increased the cost per day, what we pay them. Um, we've tried everything to try to attract subs, but unfortunately, it's been very lean getting yeah. substitutes. And we, again, we. It's not just here, it's throughout the country. It's all over the place, yeah. Thank you. So that's something we can discuss as we go further into the budget season. And it's something we could leave there and we can always take and adjust when we get into the school year. If something ever comes up, it's good to know that that money is there. Um, and that's actually probably some of the, you're probably going to have to, that's where probably some of the pre-buying comes from. Um, that's correct. When you, you pre-buy in supplies, 
those are the kind of light items it comes from because obviously we didn't have the number of subs. Thank you. Any other members with any questions or comments? Thank you, Chris, for the presentation this evening. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Thank you. Do we have anything under, um, next item would be new business? Mayor? If I could, I, I, I know all of you that were on the committee um, when we were at graduation last time at Marciano, all of us remarked at how the Little Red Schoolhouse, how deplorable it looks. It looks, it's just fallen in disrepair. So myself and Mike and Aldo and Troy and Chris are coming up with a plan so that when we're sitting at Marciano in June, uh, we're gonna be able to look around uh, for a lot of people, um, Forest Ave is the main entrance to Brockton High. It just is, right? And when you see the largest sports figure in the Northern Hemisphere and Colombo Field and Harry Allen Track, and then you look to the right and you see this old little red schoolhouse that's in deplorable condition, it's unacceptable. So um, I just want to let you know that we are going to invest money in it. Um, you know, it, it is a historic building, so there is um, different parameters we have to do. We can't just have our own internal carpenters go out and fix it. Um, but I will tell you that I made a promise to a lot of people that we are going to clean that up. And uh, there are a lot of um, seniors in Brockton that actually went to school there. Uh, a gentleman that owns the fairgrounds, Mr. Connie, was a student in that building. So, um, and he's told me that many times. So we are working to invest money, but we can do the simple things ourselves. We can green it up. We can mulch it. We can put hydrangeas. We can do whatever. So um, I know, Chris, that's a bugaboo that I've been doing, but I know you've been working diligently with Troy. So we will do that. Little things make a difference, so thank you. Thank you. Um, definitely, I know a lot of people have asked about that over the years. Yep. So, um, I mean, it is part of our history. So definitely um, looking forward to seeing that. And I actually, we used to have the spelling bees over there. Any word on it, the spelling bee this year? We had, we had it last year. We have it at the Adam. Yeah. yeah um, the acoustics Yeah, no, definitely. I know the Adam was a different... Yeah, it was different also depending on temperatures. That's, yeah. Yeah. Brutal. Definitely. Thank you so much. Um, I believe that concludes our finance subcommittee meeting for the evening. Um, so I'm going to do a roll call vote to um, finish our meeting. But before we do that, we will be coming back for the public hearing on the building naming. Um, so we will be coming back in a few minutes. We're going to take a short break. It is 631. We'll come back in a few minutes. So the next meeting will be the Brockton School Committee public hearing, naming of facilities. Um, so uh, Mrs. Sullivan, to come out of the, um, to close the meeting. Roll call. Motion to adjourn, I apologize. I'm a little under the weather this evening. So bear with me, uh, motion to adjourn. So a motion was made by Mrs. Sullivan. Can I get a second? Second, second, Jared. Second. Jared, sec uh, Mr. Homer seconded that. Okay, if I can just get a roll call. Um, actually, we don't need a uh, uh, show of hands. Okay, that is unanimous. Thank you. We'll see you in a few moments. Thank you so much.